Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Piper launches the Meridian M500 with Garmin Avionics and other upgrades. Solar Impulse 2 is prepped for an around the world attempt. And Pipistrol updates its electric Watts Up program. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Piper Aircraft has introduced its newest top-of-the-line M-Class single-engine Meridian M500 turbine business aircraft with the latest in Garmin avionics, enhanced safety features, and a number of other significant product improvements. The Piper M500 seats six with club seating. It's powered by a Pratt & Whitney PT6A 42A 500 horsepower engine. It sports a 260 knot max cruise speed and has a range of 1,000 nautical miles. Equipped with an improved Garmin G1000 avionics suite, the 2015 M500 is listed at a price of $2.26 million. The M500's new Garmin G1000 avionics suite will feature higher resolution dual 10 inch PFDs and a higher resolution 12 inch MFD, as well as the latest Garmin software upgrade, along with a GSC 700 autopilot with enhanced autopilot flight control system, including a number of flight safety features. Numerous other avionics systems and details have been updated and enhanced. The route has been set for the Solar Impulse 2, referred to as the SI2, attempt to circumnavigate the globe in a solar-powered airplane. The first solar-powered plane able to fly day and night will land in 12 locations across the world and travel approximately 18,800 nautical miles in the first attempt to fly around the globe without using a drop of fuel. For pilots Bertrand Picard and Andre Borschberg, the drive behind their mission is to demonstrate how clean technologies and a pioneering spirit can change the world. SI2 will take off from Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates, in late February or early March, and return by late July or early August 2015. The first round-the-world solar adventure will span approximately 25 flight days, spread over five months, and covering approximately 18,800 nautical miles at speeds of between 25 and 55 knots. We at ANN wish them well. After the break, Pipistrol upgrades its electric trainer plane. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. AML's patent pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to jim at aero-news.net. Pipistrol this week released a video showing an inside-the-cockpit view of their new WhatsApp electric trainer, a variant of the company's high-wing alpha trainer. Tom Patton reports. The video shows the walk-around demonstrating how the batteries can be swapped out and some details of the electric motor. It then goes through an explanation of some of the displays of the cockpit and shows taxi, takeoff, and landing. One of the interesting parts of the video is that the pilot and passenger do not wear headsets. And while there is some discernible propeller noise in the flight, 
The two on board are able to converse at a mostly normal level. How quiet is the airplane? Well, according to Pipistrel's chief designer, Tina Tomacek, It's very quiet, huh? It's like a washing machine that flies. This is what I call it. It's my favorite washing machine. <laughs> Pipistrel claims a one-hour endurance for the airplane on a single charge were enough for about six patterns and touch-and-goes. Batteries are reportedly in development to significantly increase that endurance. The price of the plane is set at about $112,000. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. Highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week we enter the world of avionics when we welcome the Aircraft Electronics Association, known as the AEA, as part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative team. Airframes are sleek and engines are powerful, but in this day and age, it seems that we look at the instrument panel before we count the rivets or check out the fan blades. Instruments, avionics, autopilot, and next-gen navigation all fall under the term of avionics. Founded in 1957, the Aircraft Electronics Association represents nearly 1,300 member companies in 43 countries, including government-certified international repair stations specializing in maintenance, repair, and installation of avionics and electronic systems in general aviation aircraft. The AEA membership also includes manufacturers of avionics equipment, instrument repair facilities, instrument manufacturers, airframe manufacturers, test equipment manufacturers, major distributors, engineers, and educational institutions. As we move towards change in our entire navigation system, the AEA stands strong to represent the avionics industry and the airframe companies that rely on their members. After these messages, the venerable Navy P-3C Orion is on its last deployment. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Pad. The Tridents of Navy Patrol Squadron VP-26 began their last deployment with the P-3C Orion aircraft. This is the last squadron operating the Orion. The Orion has served well for 50 years and is now being replaced with the P-8 Poseidon. Orbital Sciences Corporation has announced that the company's stockholders voted to approve the proposed merger with the Aerospace and Defense Groups of Alliant Technosystems. When the merger has been finalized, the new company will be renamed Orbital ATK. The FAA has proposed a $275,000 penalty against Hallmark Aviation Services. The FAA alleges Hallmark failed to ensure receiving negative drug tests for some new employees, and other employees were not enrolled in the drug testing program. Airbus Helicopters completed its first year of full integration into the Airbus Group. They say their position for the future as they adapt to the global rotorcraft sector's realities. During 2014, Airbus helicopters delivered 471 rotorcraft and booked 402 net orders. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters were planning a call yesterday 
to update Allegiant Travel Company investors, industry analysts, customers, and press regarding the current status of contract negotiations for Allegiant Air pilots, the recent strike authorization vote, and the union's request for a proffer of arbitration from the National Mediation Board. As of yet, nothing has been posted about the results of that call. On behalf of the approximately 500 pilots at Allegiant Air, the union filed a request on Friday afternoon, January 23rd, asking the National Mediation Board to make a proffer of arbitration. The request follows over two and a half years of negotiation and mediation that have yet to result in a contract. Daniel Wells, president of APA Teamsters Local 1224, said, quote, Allegiant Air Pilots have had enough, end quote. Well, that's our program for Thursday, January 29th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.